And I'm really happy that Sergei Garyanov uh, uh, is with us and he's ready to give a very nice uh, mini course uh, on some uh, results uh, about uh, Iker type uh, conjectures and, and uh, uh, around of this uh, topic. So uh, this course uh, consists of uh, um, four lectures and today we have the first lecture which is about uh, one conjecture. Uh, now Sergei uh, is affiliated with Hubei Normal University and uh, it is uh, his first lecture with uh, these uh, uh, institutions. Uh, I, I mean, in the frame of our lectorium. So the floor is yours, Sergei, you are welcome. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me? Elena, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, not as clear as Elena, though. Uh, yes, yeah, Akira, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, thank you very much, uh, all of you, uh, for attending this lecture. The title is uh, A Conjecture by Van Lint and McWilliams, and its con confirmation by, by Blockquist. Um, so, um, this, uh, this result was first obtained in uh, 1984, so it's not new, but it is very important and it's very nice itself, uh, but it also gives rise to uh, some interesting direction uh, proposed by uh, Godzilla and Mar recently in 2016 on Erdos Karada properties of uh, from the regular graphs, and so today we uh, will not say uh, we will not talk about uh, Erdos Karada properties uh, explicitly, but um, th this result uh, which we uh, discuss today is uh, actually. Uh, Establishing of Erdos Karada of uh, strict Erdos Karada property for Bailey graphs of square order, but we will talk about it later. But now let us focus on uh, this result and uh, its proof. First, let us start with uh, basic uh, definitions and facts. Uh, an affine plane is a system of points and lines that satisfy the following axioms. Any two distinct points lie on a unique line. Given any line and any point not on that line, there is a unique line which contains the point and does not meet the given line. So uh, Flaper's axiom. And the third axiom uh, is as follows. There exist three non-collinear points uh, that is points not on a single line. In an affine plane, two lines are called parallel if they are equal or disjoint. Using this definition, Flaper's axiom above can be replaced by uh, the following axiom. Given a point and a line, there is a unique line which contains the point and uh, is parallel to the line. The familiar Euclidean plane is an affine plane. In this lecture, we are interested in finite affine planes, that is, affine planes having finitely many points. And let us recall uh, basic properties of finite affine planes. If the number of points uh, in an affine plane is finite, then uh, if one line of the plane contains n points, then each line contains n points. Each point is contained in n plus one lines. There are n square points in all, and there is a total of n squares plus n lines. The number n is called the order of the affine plane. Uh, let q be a prime power and uh, w be a two dimensional vector space over the finite uh, not field, but field uh, uh, on Q elements, then the set of all cosets of zero 
uh, dimensional and one dimensional subspaces uh, of W ordered by inclusion forms an affine plane of order Q denoted by AG to Q. So uh, this is a well known construction of an affine plane from. Uh, from a two-dimensional vector space over a finite field. And uh, it is uh, also well known that uh, the elements of a finite field of order Q squared can be identified with the points of the fine geometry AG to Q as follows. Let F be uh, a finite field uh, of order Q squared, then F can be viewed in a canonical way as a two dimensional vector space over the subfield of order Q or as the affine plane at G to Q. Each non zero element uniquely defines a line through zero and can be viewed as a slope of this line. Let me recall uh, some basic properties of finite fields. Let F be a finite field. If F has characteristic two, then each element of the multiplicative group F star is a square. And if F has an odd characteristic, then the multiplicative group F star has an even number of elements and exactly a half of, of them are squares. So the other half are non-square. And also let F be a finite field of an odd order R, then the field F is known to be the splitting field for the polynomial Z to the power of R minus R, which can be factored as follows. Uh, you can see three polynomials on the slide. And the first corresponds to the zero root uh, and the second and the third one correspond to the non zero roots um, and non zero elements of F. And moreover, each square from F star is a root of the second polynomial, and each non square from F star is a root of the third polynomial. Let me uh, recall what are the lines in uh, the <coughs> A fine geometry AG to Q. Let F uh, be a finite field of order Q squared where Q is a not uh, prime power. Let D be a non square in F star in the multiplicative group. Consider the polynomial uh, Z squared minus D, which is irreduci obviously irreducible over, over uh, the field. Uh, of order Q, let alpha be a root of F, then F can be uh, written as the set of all sums X, Y plus Y alpha, where X and Y run over GF of Q. And under the identification, a line uh, in this geometry can be written as X1 plus Y1 alpha plus C times X plus Y alpha, where C runs over uh, the field of order Q and X1, Y1, X and Y are constants and X plus Y alpha is the element which is a slope. It is defined up to multiplication by uh, a non-zero constant from J of Q. Let F be uh, a finite field of order Q squared where Q is an odd prime power, the lines of the plane AG to Q are Q subsets with the property that the difference of two elements is either always a square or always a non square, depending only on the slope of the line. It follows from, from this structure of a line. Thus, the lines are partitioned into two classes, S and N, for square and non-square types. We say that 
lines of square type are quadratic and the lines of non square type are non quadratic uh, through each point of uh, ag to q there are pass q plus one over two lines of s and q plus one over two lines of n hence and on an arbitrary line l of s not passing through zero let, let us uh, mention some facts uh, let us mention it and remember uh, for further purposes. Hence, and on hence on an arbitrary line L of S not passing through zero, there are Q plus one over two non squares. Indeed, the line parallel to L containing zero is also in S. Consider the lines connecting zero with the point of L. Note that uh, Q minus one over two of them lie in S and Q plus one over two of them lie in N. The latter ones uh, intersect L in Q plus one over two points, which are the required non squares. So the fact is that an arbitrary line L in S not passing through zero has exactly q plus one over two non squares and let us uh, recall what is the van lind mcwilliams conjecture in 1978 van lind and mcwilliams conjectured that the only q subset x of the finite field jfq squared with the properties uh, that zero and one are in X and the difference X minus Y is a square for all X and Y from X. So the, the only uh, such a Q subset is this, uh, the subfield of other Q. Currently, uh, this conjecture has been proved in several ways. But the first proof is due to block quiz, and in this lecture we discuss the block quiz proof in detail. A general statement in terms of special sets. Let X be a subset of points such that all difference, all differences are squares, call such a set special, then AX is also special if A is a square and so-called anti-special. If A is a non square, anti special means uh, that all differences are non squares. And consider a translation X plus A. Uh, it is special for all A whenever X is special. And we will consider special Q sets containing zero. And the following theorem uh, was proved by Blockus. Let X be a special Q set uh, in the finite field of order Q squared, then X is a line in S. It is easy to see that this theorem confirms the Van Lind McWilliams conjecture. Uh, furthermore, if zero uh, belongs to S, let X zero be uh, the set X minus the set consisting of zero. The proof will be established in a series of lemmas, and we always assume that zero belongs to X, uh, because if not, then a, trans a translation will do. So without loss of generality, we may assume that zero belongs to X. So uh, the, the lemmas we consider uh, have a bit different structure comparing with the original, uh, compare it with the original uh, proof by Blockus, but uh, the core uh, is the same. So this is, this can be said, it can be said that th this is just my own look at this proof.
first, uh, a polynomial criterion for a Q set with zero, uh, for a Q set with zero to be aligned was established. Let uh, F X of T be the polynomial defined as the product of all uh, differences T minus X, where X runs over X zero. Lemma one, let X be a Q set in the finite field JF of Q squared containing zero. The set X is a line if and only if the polynomial Fx of t has the following special form. It has only two terms, uh, the, uh, the leading term t to the power of q minus one, and the last term, the second and the last term, the product, uh, the term of degree zero, which is equal to the product of all elements x from x zero. And let us give a proof. A line through zero looks like the set IA, uh, first direction. Uh, so we uh, suppose that uh, X is a line and show that the polynomial, the corresponding polynomial FX of T has this form. A line through zero looks like the set of all elements IA where I uh, runs over the field of order Q for some non-zero element A from uh, the field of order Q squared. Given a non-zero element J, consider given a non-zero element J from the finite field of order Q, consider uh, the value of F of X of the value of Fx of uh, Ji. After uh, simplifications, we obtain that this uh, is equal to zero. So j to the power, uh, since j is non zero, j to the power of q minus one is one. And, in, and also, since the product of all elements. Um, the product of all elements i from the multiplicative group is equal to one, sorry, is equal to minus one. The product of all elements of the multiplicative group is equal to minus one, and j to the power of q minus one is equal to one. So we get uh, the difference of equal elements, which is uh, finally equal to zero. Thus, the q minus one elements of x zero uh, are roots of the polynomial t to the power of q minus one plus the product of all elements x from x zero. It means that we have this uh, equality. Uh, the polynomial fx of t is equal to uh, the polynomial of the special form, and we are done. Let us prove the converse. Um, suppose fx of t has this special form, and let us show that x is a line. So suppose that fx of t has this form for any y1 and y2 from x0, we have that 0 equals fx of y1 and y2 respectively equals y1 to the power of q minus 1 plus the product of all elements from x0. It implies that for any y1 and y2 from x, we have that y1 to the power of q minus 1 is equal to the y2 to the power of uh, q minus 1. And consequently, the quotient of y2 and y1 to the power of q minus 1 is equal to 1. This means that 
This quotient belongs to the multiplicative group of the subfield of order Q, and thus there exists I from this multiplicative group such that Y2 is equal to I uh, multiplied by Y1. It implies that X0 has uh, a form of a line, which means that X0 is just a line through uh, X0 uh, together with uh, zero element is a line through zero. And we are done. So uh, the criterion uh, has been proved. The second uh, important uh, ingredient of the proof um, are so called case elementary symmetric functions. Let sigma k of x denote the case elementary symmetric function of the finite set x that is. Uh, they uh, are defined as follows. Consider the product of all uh, sums 1 plus x2, where x runs over x capital. This, and let us factor, uh, let us multiply all of, uh, multiply all of these, all these braces. And the resulting polynomial, the coefficients of the resulting polynomial uh, are called the case elementary, uh, uh, are called the elementary symmetric functions of the final set X. In other words, uh, sigma K of X, uh, the coefficient in front of T to the power of K sigma k of x denotes the sum of all k products of elements from x. Since fx of t, by definition, uh, is equal uh, to the product of all uh, differences t minus x, where x um, runs over x0. Let us multiply all, all such braces. And we see that the resulting polynomial is also related to the elementary symmetric functions. It is actually equal to the sum from uh, k equals zero to q minus one, and the, the term is minus one to the power of k, sigma k of x zero, uh, t to the power of q minus one minus k. And in view of the criterion, we have proved, it suffices to show, uh, to, to get uh, the main result, it suffices to show that sigma k of x zero is equal to zero. If uh, k is uh, greater, is strictly greater than zero and strictly less than q minus one. It suffices uh, to show uh, that Special elementary, uh, the special elementary symmetric functions uh, are equal to zero, but uh, actually we don't need to show that all of them uh, are equal to zero. We can. Uh, it suffices to show that only a half of them are zeros, and uh, it it. Uh, it will follow that the other house are also zeros. And uh, the following lemma, lemma two, gives a reduction. Let x zero, uh, sorry, it should be a set, zero uh, as a set, uh, be an, 
Let x0 uh, join it with uh, 0 be an arbitrary special q set uh, containing 0 to show that sigma k of x0 equals 0 for all uh, values k from 0 uh, to k minus 1, where the inequalities are strict, it suffices to prove that sigma k of x0 is equal to 0 for all k greater than zero and less or equal to q minus one over two so roughly half of them and let us give a proof of this reduction first prove that x zero to the power of minus one uh, join it with zero is a special q set let x1 x2 um, belong to ex, uh, belonging to x0 be to uh, arbitrary distinct elements, then x1 minus 1, uh, x1 inverse and x2 inverse represent arbitrary elements in x0 inverse. And we have that their difference, uh, x1 inverse minus x2 inverse, is equal to x1 inverse times x2 inverse times x2 minus x1. Since x1 inverse x2 inverse and x2 minus x1 are squares, the set x0 inverse uh, join it uh, with zero is a cube. Uh, is a sp uh, better say sp sp special q set, not a clique. It is further terminology. Uh, uh, the set x0 inverse uh, joined with 0 is a special Q set. By the assumption of the lemma, we have that uh, sigma k of x0 equals 0 and sigma k of x0 inverse equals 0 for all k for, uh, greater than 0 and less or equal to q minus 1 over 2. Since uh, sigma with index q minus 1 minus k of x0 can be written as sigma k of x0 inverse multiplied by the product of all elements x from x0, we conclude that sigma k of x0 is equal to 0 for all elements k greater uh, than q minus 1 over 2 and less than q minus 1. And we are done. Before we consider lemma three, let us uh, give one more definition. Let A be a set of Q plus one over two non-squares such that A minus B is a square uh, for all A, B uh, from A capital. An example of such a set is the collection of non-squares on a line in S not through the origin zero. So we, we consider it this fact at the beginning. So uh, this is the time when uh, it appears. And we call such a set extra special and the fact that the collection of non-squares on a line in S not through the origin is an example of such a set. Uh, this. Uh, there are there are objects that satisfy this definition. Uh, the objects satisfying uh, this definition uh, exist. And let, let us uh, consider lemma three, which gives a decomposition of the set uh, of non-squares of the finite field of for the Q squared. Let A be any extra special set. And uh, X 
a special Q set containing zero. Then the set of all the set A multiplied by X zero consisting of all products AX where A runs over A capital and X runs over X zero is the set of all non squares in F. In other words, the set of all non squares in F can be decomposed uh, into a product of an extra special set and the non zero elements of a special Q set containing zero. Let us give a proof. Obviously, uh, this set A multiplied by X zero contains only non squares because it consists of uh, products of a square and a non square. Since there are Q squared minus one over two products AX involved, it remains to show that all are different. Suppose uh, we have equality a1 uh, x1 equals a2 x2 for some elements a1 a2 from a capital and x1 x2 from x capital then let us subtract um, a2 x1 from both sides of this equality and then let us factor out x1 in the first difference and let us factor out a2 in the second difference the elements, the, the element on the on the left is is a square because it is a product of two squares. The element a two, the element the element on the right, uh, x two multiplied by the difference x a two multiplied by the difference x two minus x one is either uh, a non square or x1 equals x2, but then a1 equals a2. So all the uh, all the products are different, and lemma uh, has been proved. This decomposition uh, is used uh, in the following lemma. But before this, let us, uh, before we consider the following lemma, the next lemma, let us uh, consider one more polynomial. Let A be an extra special set, and for an element A from A capital, put Fx, F, uh, F with indices. X and, uh, and A of T be the polynomial de uh, defined as the product of all differences T minus AX, where X runs over X0. Uh, and lemma four uh, reads as follows for an extra special set A and a special. And a special Q set X, the equality, uh, the product of all such polynomials uh, where A runs over A capital is equal to the polynomial T to the power of Q squared minus one over two plus one. Such an equality holds. And let us give a short proof uh, the, uh, which uses the decomposition the product of such polynomials uh, can be written as the product of all polynomials t minus a x where a runs over a capital and x runs over x zero then when uh, a and x run as they do, their product AX run over the set uh, of the uh, runs over the set of 
all non-squares in the finite field F. So we replace the product of all polynomials T minus AX by the product of all polynomials T minus N, where N is a non-square. And using the basic property of a finite field, we conclude that this is equal to T to the power of Q squared minus one over two plus one. We discussed this property at the beginning. And the rest of the lecture is devoted to lemma five, which is the main lemma. Uh, and uh, let us consider its statement. Let x zero join it with zero uh, in uh, figure braces again. Sorry. B, uh, let uh, x zero join it with zero be an arbitrary special Q set. Then sigma k of x zero equals zero for all. Uh, values k greater than zero and less or equal to q minus one over two. In view of lemma, lemma two, in, in view of the reduction lemma, it it suffices to, to get uh, the required uh, result, which is our theorem, it suffices to, to prove lemma five. Suppose to the contrary that the statement of lemma five is not true, and let m be the smallest positive integer less or equal to q minus one over two with the property that sigma m of x zero is not equal to zero. If there is no such m, we are done. Then the polynomial fx a of t can be written as follows. Let us consider uh, two uh, the first two terms. The, the first the uh, the leading term is uh, t to the power of two minus one and the second one is minus one to the power of m, a to the power multiplied by a to the power of m, uh, multiplied by sigma m of x zero, multiplied by uh, t to the power of q minus one minus m, and plus terms of lower, lower degree, uh, which are not so important. As a consequence, the product of such polynomials fx a of t, where a runs over a capital, is equal to the polynomial t to the power of q squared minus 1 over 2 plus minus 1 to the power of m multiplied by the sum of all elements a to the power of m, where a runs over a capital multiplied by sigma m of x zero, multiplied by t to the power of q squared minus one over two minus m, and plus uh, some terms of lower degree, which are also not so important. But we know uh, in view of the decomposition lemma and the lemma that follow it from the decomposition lemma, that this product is equal to the polynomial t to the power of q squared minus one over two plus one, and we know uh, uh, that sigma m of x zero is not equal to zero. We suppose that. So uh, this fact imply that uh, this factor, which is the sum of, of all elements a to the power of m, where a, a runs over a capital, this sum is equal to zero for all extra special sets A.
for an extra special set A um, and an integer S, we put A to the power of S to be the set consisting of all elements A uh, to the power of S, where A runs over A capital. Let us show that for an extra special set A, the sets A to the power of minus one and A to the power of Q are extra special. Take arbitrary A1, A2 from A capital. It means that A1 and A2 are non-squares and the difference A1 minus A2 is a square. Note that uh, by the basic properties of finite fields, A1 inverse A2 inverse unknown squares and A1 to the power of Q, A2 to the power of Q unknown squares. These are the, the, the last two elements are the images of A1 and A2 under the Frobenius automorphism. So the property of the property to be a non-square is preserved. Then the difference A1 minus A1 inverse minus A2 inverse can be written as A1 A2 inverse multiplied by A2 minus A1. And this difference is a square because uh, A1, the product of any two, this is also a basic property of a finite field that the product of two non squares is a square. So the inverse is also a square, and the difference A2 minus A1 is a square. So uh, we conclude that A1 inverse minus uh, A2 inverse is a square, which means by definition that. A to the power a capital to the power of minus to the power of minus one is an extra special set. Also, using the Frobenius automorphism, um, the difference a one to the power of q minus a two to the power of q uh, can be written as a1 minus a2 uh, to get a, uh, to the power of q and this is a square which means that a to the power of q is extra special hence a to the power of minus q is also extra special and combining this with the established property that the sum of a to the power of m uh, where a runs over a capital equals zero for all extra special sets using uh, this specific extra special set oh, sorry um, we uh, we conclude that a to the power of minus q is extra special, and we have that the sum um, of a to the power of q uh, minus qm, where a runs over a, is equal to zero uh, for all extra special sets a. Since for any non square a, the equality a to the power of q squared minus one over two equals minus one holds. Uh, we multiply uh, these two equalities and finally get that the sum of elements a to the power of q squared minus 1 over 2 minus qm where a runs over a capital equals 0 for all extra, extra special sets a, a capital. Let T be an element from uh, the difference of the field uh, of order Q squared and of order Q and take A to be the set 
consisting of all elements p plus i where i runs over the subfield of order q and p plus i is a non-square this uh This can be viewed as as a uh, additive translation of the subfield of order Q, and we know that such a set uh, is extra special by the remark at the beginning of this lecture. Then we know that. Such a sum uh, at the bottom of the slide is equal to zero. So the double sum is also equal to zero. Let us split this double sum into two equal sums. And let us add and subtract one more sum. So uh, we have two, um, we have four terms in total. The first two terms are in braces. Uh, the second two terms are in braces. And the second term uh, in the first braces is has the same absolute value as the term. As the second term in the second braces, we have added and subtracted this term. And let us manipulate this, uh, these terms. Um, the first two, you can see that um, the terms in sums are the same. Uh, and the only difference is that, I mean, the first, consider the first braces. Uh, for the first sum and the second sum, the, the general term uh, has the same form. The only difference is that for the first sum, p plus i must be uh, a non-square. And for the second sum, p plus i must be a square. In, uh, so we can combine these two uh, sums into one, which gives the sum of all uh, over all elements i from uh, g of of q, and the general term is q plus i to the power of q squared minus one over two minus qm. Consider the second braces. In the second braces, um, consider the first sum. You can see that p plus i uh, is a is a non-square. P plus i is a non-square. So p plus i to the power of q squared minus one over two. Is equal to minus one, and we can add uh, such a factor p plus y to the power of q squared minus one over two, and put the sign minus. But for the uh, for the second sum in uh, in the second braces. P plus y is a square, so p plus uh, i to the power of q squared minus 1 over 2 is equal to 1. And we, uh, and we can just uh, put one more factor, p plus i to the power of q squared minus 1 over 2 here. Then we write this w 
when we uh, then we multiply t plus i uh, this uh, t plus i to uh, the first power and t plus i to the second power for each uh, for each sum and get uh, the following expression uh, the first term is just the same uh, the sum of all uh, over all i from the subfield of order q and the term is t plus i to the power of q squared minus one over two minus q m and minus the sum my, uh, of two sums that uh, such that the terms have the same form but the only difference is is that t plus i for the first sum is a non-square and for the second sum is a square similarly to what we did in the previous slide we combine these two sums together and finally get that the original zero is equal to the sum over all i from the subfield of order q where the term is t plus i to the power of q squared minus one over two minus q m minus the sum um, over all uh, elements of the sub or over all elements i of the subfield of order q t plus I, uh, then the term is t plus i to the power of q squared minus one minus q m denote this uh, difference by f capital of t so the, this is actually a polynomial and this polynomial uh, vanishes for all t that are differences uh, the, for all t taken from the difference uh, gf of q squared minus gf of q and since f of t has degree less than q squared minus q, it's easy to see, it, it is identically zero. Note that f of t consists of two uh, parts of uh, can be written as the difference of two sums. For the first sum, each the the leading coefficient has the the leading term has degree q squared minus one over two minus q m, and for the second sum, the leading uh, term has degree q squared minus one minus q m. And consider the coefficient of uh, t to the power of q squared minus qm minus u in f of t since q squared uh, minus qm minus q is always greater uh, it, not always but uh, whenever q is greater uh, than one q squared minus qm minus q that is uh, the degree of the leading term of the first of the second sum sorry um, u squared minus qm minus q is the degree of the term we consider uh, this in this inequality uh, the solution of this inequality shows that the first sum does not contribute to the to the degree of uh, to the to the coefficient of uh, the monomial uh, t to the power of q squared minus q minus q. So we only need to consider the the, the second term uh, of f t the sum. We apply uh, the binomial theorem. To t plus i to the power uh, of q squared minus one minus qm, and then sum up by i. This gives this uh, equality. 
the first is a binomial coefficient and the second is the sum of all elements i to the power of q minus one it's uh, well known that the sum it's easy to see that the, uh, the sum of i to the power of q minus one where i runs over the subfield of order q is equal is is congruent to minus one modulo p where p is the characteristic of the subfield uh, of order q and to have a final contradiction it suffices to show uh, a technical result that the binomial coefficient q squared minus qm minus one choose q squared minus qm minus q is not congruent to zero and we have two minutes left uh, so we we just manipulate uh, the standard um, formula for the binomial coefficient and write it down as the product over all j uh, from one to q minus one uh, and the cure uh, the the general factor is q squared minus qm minus j divided by j and considering some cases um, uh, namely the case when p does not divide j and the case when p does divide j we um, we conclude that this binomial coefficient uh, is not congruent to zero modular p and this gives the final contradiction and we are done with lemma five and with the theorem uh, in general and let us uh, make some concluding remark in this lecture we have considered the block with proof of the Van Liet McWilliam conjecture in the next lecture we will discuss why the quadratic lines in AG to Q can be viewed as canonical clicks in the Paley graph P of Q squared and the block with result can be viewed and why the block with result can be viewed as establishing strict EKR property for Paley graphs of square order. Thank you very much for your attention. Oh, thank you, Sergey, very much for your talk. Any questions to the lecture? Hello, thank you. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah, please. Yeah, so uh, you have binomial coefficient at the last slide. Yeah. And uh, so when you consider this binomial, so this is a product of Q minus one factors. Right. But the, Well, as a rational number, then this is not the uh, integer, but the, the point is that the, okay, okay. So J in the denominator, but the, so you consider each factor individually and then- Yes, each factor individually. Uh, yeah, yeah. And if, if P divide, yeah. uh, if P does not divide J, Mm -hmm. then, that, that, there's then no problem. Has, has inverse, yeah. yeah. But if yeah. Uh, consider the case when p does not does divide j, and yeah. let j equals p to the power of s times mm -hmm. r for some positive integer yeah. s and r, where p mm -hmm. that p does not divide r. Yeah, yeah. Then we uh, can write it down as um, as follows. Yeah, yeah I see. So the point is that uh, the the number of factors of p in the denominator is at most the number of factors in p in the numerator. Yeah, in fact, they are equal. Yeah, 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 yeah right. Yeah. So yeah, it's very interesting situation, right? Yeah. 
never thought about this kind of situation. Yeah, okay, I just want to confirm this phenomena. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Roman. Thank you for this comment. Well, any other questions or comments? Okay. Well, if not, then uh, let us thank again Sergey for this interesting talk. Well, it was in some sense it was an introduction to the main results which will be shown uh, to us uh, in the further lectures, right? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, I hope that uh, we will see Sergey and all other participants in two weeks. So the next uh, lecture will be uh, on April. 25th, and it will be about properties of graphs due to this topic. Okay, thank you so much, and see you in two weeks. Okay, bye.